always be in a safe position. We thank you for this congregation of saints. We thank you for this fellowship. We thank you for this entire community. Amen. We thank you most of all for your son Jesus who you gave that all of us could have a right to the tree of life. <clears throat> we ask you to forgive us of our sins and continue to, to mold us to be what you want us to be. We are thankful for every family that is in here today and every family that uh, is worshiping you today. We thank you for keeping us safe and, and healing us in our health and in our spiritual minds and just causing us to just uh, be more thankful toward you. As we go through this worship services, be with us and everything that we do you will be pleased with. Continue to heal this nation, oh God, and through whatever that is that's going on through the storms, we're praying that the world will open their eyes and call upon your name and where they may be able to obey and be saved. We thank you for all that you do for us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Something about the name. It's just Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's just something about that name.
shown on me is large print Bible. Maybe I can read this good this morning. Matthew 26, verses 36 through 42. Then Jesus came with to the place called Gethsemane and said to the disciples, Sit here while I go over yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. And then he said to them, My soul is extremely sorrowful even unto death. Stay here and watch with me. He went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, Father, if it possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you enter, uh, not enter into temptation, that you enter into temptation. The spirit is indeed willing, but the faith is weak. And again, a second time he went away and prayed, saying, O oh my Father, if this cup cannot pass away from me, unless I drink it, your will be done. Amen. Certainly a challenge to each one of us as we face trying times yes. is the fact that we got to depend on God and continue to live within the will that he has so lovingly given us. Yes. That's the reason we're here to worship today and honor him as our God. Honor God as our God and Christ as our Savior. Yes. Shall we go to him in prayer? Our Heavenly Father and our God, we do appreciate so much the blessings of life you've given us, the privilege that we have as Christians that we can rely upon your grace because we recognize of ourselves our own inability to receive that blessed hope and promise that you have given to those that are faithful. Yes. That is to go to home and be with you in heaven. We recognize, Father, that that promise is made to all men if they follow your commandments and do it call your grace and depend upon you for their salvation. We don't earn it, our Heavenly Father, but we got through the actions of faith that we might continue to live unto you and say to you, Father, we appreciate your blessings. Yes. We ask your continual forgiveness and grace as we go down life's pathway. And certainly during this trying time and in all the world's situation, basically, we ask for your blessings that we might wake up and recognize you as God. And may this be a wake-up call to those to depend upon you. We recognize that so many people have walked away from the commandments and love that you have for them. And we ask you that they be returned and have a place within them an honest and kind and tender heart of faith and belief through the blessings of the Word of God. Through Jesus, amen. amen. <coughs> Try your dog on every hand, and we cannot understand all the ways that God will lead us to that blessed promised land. But He'll guide us with His eyes, and we'll follow till we die. We will understand.
in life, we ought to have a favorite spot to do certain things, shouldn't we? Yes. It may be your dining room. While we're not studying on Wednesday night, and not Mark has done a great job of doing that. Yes, and, and we want all of us to still take time to study and pray. Yes. Regardless of where the church is meeting, we ought to take that time to pray. So Jesus had a particular spot he would go to. He would go to the Garden of Gethsemane. Go to the Garden of Gethsemane. I can imagine it was a serene spot. A spot probably we're not going to be interrupted by different people. So you can just have a little talk with Jesus and tell him all about your talk with the Father and tell him all about your trouble. But well, let's look at this lesson, church. The Bible tells us there were certain disciples. He had 12. But there were certain disciples he took with him. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. But yet and still, when he got ready to talk to his father, he told them to stay here while I go yonder and pray. So for a prince, sometimes you have to talk to Jesus and tell no one about it. There's some problem, we have to talk to Jesus alone. I cannot bear these burdens, what? Alone. I must tell Jesus. So Jesus recognized that Thomas can't help me. Peter can't help me. Matthews can't help me. Thomas and Judas, none of those people are going to help me. The only person that can help me is God. And so he decided to go and pray. Let's see what he did. Verse number 36. The Bible says, Jesus came to them at a place called Gethsemane. And he said to, to the disciples, that means all of them, sit here while I go and pray over there. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. So the other twelve were sitting in a different position. But now Peter, for some reason, he was summoned up, he was in Jesus' closed corner. You have people that can surround you that you can bring clothes to you. So Peter was always somehow in the presence of the Lord. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. And he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. Then he said to them, my, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch with me. He went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, To my father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as your will. So my lesson this morning, let God will be done. Regardless of what happened in our life, we ought to let God's will be done. It's not the will of God that any man should perish. But there's something that man must repent in this life in order to keep from being, in order to not perish. God can save us without baptism. But yet he still is the word of God. If anyone is going to be saved, he must be baptized for the what? Remission of his sin and live a godly life until God calls him from labor to reward. Yes. What is your religion? God's word tells us what your religion is. James 1 and verse number 27. Yes. It's a pure yeah. and undefiled. I like something that's pure because it's hard to find pure stuff now. I, look, I had to, I had to bought some milk a few days ago. It said pure milk, but it had some additive put into it. Whenever you add something to something, it's no longer what pure. The only thing that is pure is like it started from the beginning, what it is now, and at the end, it's going to be the same thing. So pure and undefiled for God is it? Is to visit the widows and orphan and keep oneself unspotted from His word. It's the will of God that you don't perish, but we must live for God in an ungodly time. Be faithful to God even to win unto death, and he'll give you a crown of life that they did not away. That's, the, that's what we ought to be. But let's look what Jesus said. Lord, I pray this cup pass from me. But not my will, but what? You are here this morning because you had a will, and you feel feeling God's will. Yes. 
You're here this morning not because you think the preachers or the leaders are going to call you. It's because you are ought to do the will of God. Yeah. He did it one time. Wow. He went a little farther to pray again, church. Fell on his face in sorrow and disappointment. Prayed again to his father. Pray that this cup do what? Pass. Pass from me. What cup, Lord? We realize that death on the cross was not a beautiful sight. Most horrible and horrific thing to look at someone hanging and dying and suffocating because they can't breathe because of the weight of their own body. I know in a few days what's going to happen. Matthew chapter 26, verse 25. Judas had already betrayed me. Matthew 26, 34. Peter had already denied me. Many of the disciples have gone away. And now in a few days, I'm going to be carried to Calvary and be nailed to a cross. And I understand what that must be like. Can't you say hallelujah this morning because God paid that price that you can pay? Aren't you glad this morning I didn't have to go to that cross and suffer that? Because Isaiah, the prophet, talks about that. In the 53rd chapter of the book of Isaiah, he was bruised for our iniquity. And the chastisement of his peace was upon us. But with his stripes, aren't you glad this morning you're healed? With his stripes, we are healed. With his stripes, we are whole. With his strike, we are a member of his glorious church. And with his strike, we have the forgiveness of our sin. One of the greatest joys, God will, will be done. In Numbers chapter 16 uh -huh. and verse number 49. Sometimes we hear people say all the time, I've never seen anything like this before. But I want you to read Numbers 16. The Bible tells me there was a group of people that turned away from God. And God allowed the earth to swallow them up. Yeah. Verse number 49, there was 14,000 people that died because of disobedience to God. And I want to say to America, I want to say to all of you that's listening to, uh, to me right now, as they worldwide since this past, since this month, since, since, since the month of March, since the time now, 200,000 people have died. I'm not concerned about death. Death's going to come upon all of us. Yeah. But my concern is, did they know Jesus? And the biggest chance I take in life is when I fail to tell someone about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that's the biggest chance I worry about. And I worry about those that never know Christ, those that never heard the gospel. That's what I worry about. And every day of my life, every chance I get, I talk to people about Jesus. Someone say, you remember a few months ago, you was on a cruise. We was on a cruise on Sunday. But guess what happened? What? I talked to those in charge of the rooms on that ship. And I talked with them, on, not on Sunday morning, but I talked to them on Thursday. And they said, we can provide a place for you to worship. And they provided a place for it. We didn't have to pay for it. And guess what I did, Sister Husband? I started missionary work. I started going different places, talking to them about Christ, inviting them to come. And on that Sunday morning, we had almost 12 people in that room serving. And I began to think about Lot and his wife. My son was, my wife was there. My son's there. His wife was there. His children was there. And there was many people we met that was there. And when we left there, we still had that name. We still talked to them. Guess about what? Not the cruise. Talk to them about Jesus. Amen. But I want to say his will going to be done. Amen. Whether all of us could be lost, but the will of God is going to be what? Yeah. Done. His will was when he was crucified. Matthew 27, 28. He said, all authority has been given to me. Yes. I want you to go and teach all nations. Cold Spring, he wants us to tell our neighbors about him. Not about Joe McCall or Jamie or, or Norland or Prince or anybody else. Or, anybody else here. He wants to tell the world about him, isn't it not? Because to say, if you tell them about me, if I, if I be lifted up in your life, I draw all men for God unto me. And when they come to Jesus, when they start doing the will of God, you got to see some different people. When you come and doing the will of God, you got to find people loving one another. Caring about one another. Because the whole life of Jesus, the Bible said, he went about doing good. Yes. 
I didn't hear him hurting not a single person. But those that was in sin, he gave them a second chance, didn't he? Those that were hungry, what did he do for them? He fed them. Those that didn't have a friend, and that's the reason why God allowed Jesus to suffer on that cross, so that he could understand what we are going through. If you have never been hungry, you don't know what it's like to be hungry. If you've never been worried about where your next meal is going to come from, when you see people on the street, you don't understand that. But if you have to worry about what your meal is going to come from, well, how are you going to pay your next bill? Or how are you going to pay your car note? You can understand deeper now, can't you? You can understand them, too. Because some of us have been there. Jesus Say the foxes have holes, the birds of air, they have a nest, but the Son of Man have nowhere to lay his hand. Yeah. I want to tell you a little about my life. I was born in Bethlehem, laid in the manger, because they had no room for me in the end. Yeah. So you know what it means to be pushed out, doesn't it? He grew up in a little town called Nazareth. And guess what he said, everybody said about Nazareth, can anything good come out of Nazareth? When he grew up at the age of 30, he gave his disciple commission to go all the world and preach the gospel. But there was those that wanted to stop him. Pilate tried him. And guess what? The governor tried him according to the Roman law. And guess what they had to say? I find no fault in him. Because everything I read about him, everything I heard about him, he went about doing good. Yes. And I want to say to you this morning, that same Jesus, will is going to be done. Many of us may say, well, I'm not going to attend church no more. His will is still going to be done. Yes. Yes. You that are faithful to the end, his will is going to still be done. Yeah. It's still going to be done. You that are helping others, and it's somehow or another, pardon me for having moved this mask so much, uh, you that help others, for some reason or another, you never have to ask for help yourself. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. And that's the reason why the Bible says, more blessed to give yeah. than, to than to receive. When we're able to help others, God opened the door and said, heaven and pour you out a blessing that you won't be able to receive. So I want to say to you this morning, let God's will be done. I believe with all my heart, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 1 and 2, his disciples met on the first day of the week. Yes. Acts 20 and 7, they met on the first day of the week. And I believe Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25, the same as the Lord then, it's the same today. We should assemble on what day? First, yes. first day of the week. They gave on the first day of the week. They communed on the first day of the week. They sung on the first day of the week. The gospel preached on the first day of the week. And I just believe those that was added to the church, it wasn't the first day of the week, but Acts 2, 38, Peter told them to repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sin, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, and that same gospel will add you to the church today. So if you want to be saved, it's not the will of God that you be perished. Jesus, in Luke chapter 13, verse 3, listen to what Christ said. I tell you now, except you repent, you should all likewise perish. The reason why he don't want us to perish, because in John 3, 17, God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. And the world got to understand, we must obey the commandments of God. We must live according to the principle of God. We must share what we have learned from the word of God with those that don't know God. So when, it come, when it's all over, when the work of man is all over, We'll be able to stand before God and the will judge and say like Paul said, I fought a good fight. I have finished the course. I've kept the faith. And therefore, that is laid upon me a crown of righteousness. Faith is not for me, not for me only, but all of those that love God's appearing. If you love God's appearing this morning, tell somebody about it. Share this with someone. Encourage someone. Guide someone. And let's let them know, number one, that Jesus is coming back. So, he said, it won't be very long because we can see so much occurring in our life. It could come back today or tomorrow. But you ought to say to yourself right now, as we the understanding song, say, Jesus is coming soon. Because I'm time for him.
us for the ways of delivering the word. We thank you for that. Yes, yes. And God, we thank you for those that come this morning to encourage each other just to be faithful. Thank you for our sun service, our prayers, our scripture reading, and us being able to bring our voice together here. And Father, we look forward to that day when we all can get together here and be able to be united again. Yes. We offer this and ask for it and offer it in your son's name. Amen. Amen.
11, 23, he says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it and remember some men. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he come. Yeah. So let a man uh, examine himself, so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. Let us go to our heavenly Father in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we are so thankful that the sacrifice was made for once. And that we keep this in remembrance as we eat and we drink of your body and drink of your blood. We thank you for the sacrifice, yeah. the atonement, yeah. that every time we do this, we remember the agony. And we're just so thankful for the bread and for the fruit of the wine as we partake of it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.